Hey YouTubers, this is EMDSC14R, and this is a video on how I made the kit bashed um, Atlas Bachman or Bachman Atlas uh, BQ23 uh, 7. Uh, so let's get started. Um, you guys have seen in a previous video exactly um, the progress that I've made on this unit. Um, and I went into detail as to how I did it, but I didn't show exactly uh, how extensive the um, kit bashing details were. Um, so this video is basically going to showcase all those details and how I implemented them. So let's get started with the outside of the locomotive. Um, nothing externally is different. Um, you know, to the body shell anyway. Uh, the only major change that I did is I closed up the front pilot here on the front and at the rear. Um, I put KD scale uh, shelf couplers on here and I'm still using the original Atlas uh, coupler pockets or coupler boxes I should say um, but they've been cut down to actually fit inside the new pilot um, and that was a little bit tedious to do um, but it works perfectly and that's what actually holds the shell on there are no screws holding this shell to the chassis it's using the original um, coupler boxes for it um, as I mentioned before this is an Atlas SD24 chassis riding on Atlas Jeep 38 trucks let me just turn the locomotive on its side here so these are your Jeep 38 trucks. Same trucks used on the Jeep 38-2, the Jeep 40, um, you know, on, on the Atlas units pretty much. Um, but you can swap them onto the Atlas SD24, SD35, or SD26 chassis because both locomotives use the exact same bolster holes. Um, as you can see, um, this is how I strengthen the pilots at each end of the locomotive and you're probably looking at the fuel tank which actually this was the most extensive part uh, of the kit bash um, it actually is technically two fuel tanks in one um, the end tanks and uh, tank backs here or, or the end of the tanks here I should say um, these are actually cut off an Atlas U30C fuel tank. Um, the Atlas U30C, the B23-7, they both have similar fuel tanks. Of course, the U30C has a longer fuel tank, but that wouldn't fit on this model. And I basically um, modified this tank to accommodate it. So the original tank here is the original SD24... Ah, I'm sorry. It's an SD35 fuel tank that... I put on the SD24 um, chassis because the tanks are interchangeable. And I basically cut the sides of the fuel tank off and I uh, added styrene here. And as you can see, all I did was measure with a pen and I got it pretty close to the, let me see if I can clear that up. I got it pretty close to the stock Atlas fuel tank angle. It's a couple millimeters um, taller than the Atlas um, section here but uh, that's okay I'm really happy with it I'm glad it came out the way it did um, that took hours to do um, I used large files small files this side came out pretty good although there's some blemishes here. The line is not exactly straight on this side. I could still technically tweak that, but I'm not going to do that. When it's when it's painted grimy black anyway, you're, it's not going to be that noticeable anyway, because it's going to be grimy black. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the external features. Uh, let me go and show you internally uh, what modifications were done. There's really not much that was that needed to be done. Um, except cutting the battery box frame on the inside here. I'll show you that in a second, okay? Give me a second. Hold on. Okay, since I got the coupler boxes off, 
you guys can see how the Atlas SD24 chassis fits snug inside the Bachmann shell, which is really cool. But now that I got the coupler boxes off, um, I basically can just lift the shell off, which is what I'm going to do right now. So, that's basically it. And basically you do have to remove the cast on side fuel tanks from the Bachmann shell, obviously. Um, that was already done mostly when I got the shell. Um, but, yeah. The major modifications that you can see here, this is the metal weight that actually comes up inside the SD24 uh, battery box section, which is just under the cab. In order to get that shell to fit perfectly on this uh, chassis, you do have to trim these down um, on both sides um, with a Dremel tool. And I basically just roughly eyeballed it and uh, that's how I was able to get the measurements for that. I just pretty much eyeballed it. I, I do a lot of that with my kit bashes. Um, I just eyeball stuff and then I try it. Um, but you can actually look and see that this is... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can tell this is an Atlas SD24 chassis. Uh, it's a lot longer than the Jeep 38 chassis. Um, and it's got a DCC decoder in it. Uh, this decoder... Where did I get this decoder from? This decoder came with my Santa Fe SD24, which is now an SD14R. But I could not find an engine to work with it, but I tried it on this one, and it actually works. So I just left the decoder in here. I don't know if this is an NEC decoder or not, but um, that's pretty much how I did this unit. Um, it will get sound in DCC. I mean, there's plenty of room inside the shell in this section here to put a speaker there's plenty of room in here, because if you sh if you put the shell back on, like so, let me see if I can get this on camera. Yeah, there's plenty of space in there to get a speaker in there, um, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, guys, this is pretty much how I made this BQ23-7 powered. Um, you can still find these shells or locomotives on eBay. There's two up for sale right now. One is a dummy. One is actually part of a lot. The dummy one is going for the bid on it so far is like 17 bucks. Um, but yeah, you can actually find these. Um, I actually do have a picture of one of these units that I'm looking at. And there's really not much I need to do with the front pilot. I just need to paint this black here, this all black. Um, obviously, the fuel tank, it needs... Horns, might put some better grab irons on it, but I might just leave it alone. But other than that, there's really nothing else I need to do to this unit, um, except those minor little changes. So, just wanted to show you guys how I made this unit. It was a very fun project to actually make, because I didn't know what I was going to do with the chassis at first. But then, you know, I had this shell laying around. I was looking at it, I said, well, I had plans to power it for years anyway. I might as well start doing it now. So... Yeah, so that's pretty much how I made this unit. I mean, there's other ways I could have there's other ways I could have made this. Um you can technically modify the U30C fuel tank to actually fit on here, but you'd actually have to cut the frame. My goal of this kit bash was to not do any major modifications to the frame other than that right there. That's as far as I was going to go. I didn't want to do anything other than that. I wanted to be able to use what was there already. So if you guys don't want to do something like that drastic, um, this is the way I would recommend doing it. Let me actually see if I can get the fuel tank off because the way that the... Uh, since I added these parts on there, it actually fits a little too snug under the chassis, so it's a little hard to get off. Let me see if I can get that off and show you guys. Hold on. So here's the fuel tank. And you guys can see exactly what I did to uh, make it. Now, when I put these end, these end pieces on, the fuel tank had to be attached to the chassis. And the reason was because these 
air tank support brackets here have to touch the bottom of the frame. That's let me see if I can get it focus. That's a prototypically correct feature that had to be correct. So in order for me to actually get that to look prototypical, I had to basically attach these while it was on the frame so that these two support brackets would touch. Um, that one's a little crooked because I didn't straighten it up, but that's okay. Um, but this is the work that I had to do to get it to fit on that uh, chassis. So I didn't have to do any, that's the chassis right there. I didn't have to do any major modifications to it, um, which is, I didn't want to do that. So I'm glad I was able to do it this way. So, yeah. So that's basically it, guys. That's how I made this custom kit bash. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later. Bye, y'all.